This is day five in my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the exams, Monday to Saturday, I'm posting a new video each day with a new six mark question so that you can practice how to answer them. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and access all of the videos via the playlist. For today's six mark question, we're looking at one of the required practicals from Unit 6 of Chemistry Paper 2. Before you dive in, I just want to remind you that although you get given a whole piece of paper, and this may look like an essay question, it's really not. You need to lay your ideas out in a logical fashion, but there aren't any marks in GCSE Science for writing in full sentences or paragraphs or anything like that. In fact, I would actively encourage you to answer the question as a numbered list. This is going to mean a few things. It's going to make it much easier for the examiner to see that you've hit each part of the method and that you haven't missed out any steps. It's also going to encourage you to do so logically because you're only going to include one instruction per numbered part of the list. It also makes your life easier because if you're doing an investigation where you then need to change something and go back and do it again, it's much easier to say repeat steps one to five than it is to say complete the whole investigation starting at the beginning going up to that bit and it's just going to take you far more words to do it that way. The other thing you should be aware of is that for these level marked questions where we're thinking about the method for an investigation, the level three usually says something about the investigation you're describing leading to valid outcomes that would actually answer the question. So in other words, will your method actually work? When you finish, you need to read through and check, have you missed out anything, any step of the method? And also, have you actually talked about changing the independent variable and doing the whole thing again? Because otherwise you won't have any data to compare. So now we've reminded you of all those things. If you haven't already answered this question, pause the video now for six minutes and write down an answer. Measuring changes in rate of reaction by looking at a change in turbidity is one of the named required practicals for the GCSE. But AQA don't actually specify a particular chemical reaction that you have to do. They just say it could be any reaction where we see turbidity. The thing is, though, there are really only two options that we can do at GCSE in school. So chances are you have done this exact investigation. But because it's not named in the specification, they will give you the symbol equation. And quite often they also give you a diagram to go alongside. So as with any investigation, I would suggest that you start out by identifying what the variables are so that you make sure that in your method you have changed the independent variable and you have measured the dependent variable. So here our independent variable is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid because it says in the question that that's being changed. And then what we're going to measure is the rate of reaction. Now we're able to do this because this reaction produces a precipitate. It produces a solid product out of some aqueous solutions. So you can see from the simple equation here that the state symbol for sulfur is solid. So that tells you it's a precipitate and it's going to make the reaction turn turbid. Now we're able to use this to help us to work out what the change in rate is because we're assuming that when you do this, you usually do it over a cross and you're looking for the cross to disappear. And we assume that it takes the same amount of sulfur every time to block out the cross. So therefore, the longer it takes to get that amount of sulfur, the slower the reaction is. This is quite a complicated investigation, so I'm going to make myself some notes before I start. Beginning with what is the actual basic reaction? So I'm mixing together some hydrochloric acid and some sodium thiosulfate, and I must make sure that in my method, I actually say they need to go in the conical flask together. Then what is it that I'm going to measure? How am I going to know that this reaction is finished? Well, what I'm going to measure is the length of time taken for a cross that I've put my conical flask on top of to disappear because there's so much sulfur being made. So therefore, in my method, I need to actually make sure I say put it on top of the cross. Then I'm going to think about what I'm going to do with my independent variable. What am I going to change when I've done this reaction once? Well, that's the acid. So I'm going to say I'll repeat these steps and I'll change the concentration of the acid. And I might want to explain that the way that I would do that is by diluting it down with some water. Then we can think about what is it that we're going to keep the same? What are our control variables? So the first one is going to be the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate, because I should only be changing the concentration of one chemical at once. So that stays the same. Also staying the same will be the volume of both the sodium thiosulfate and the acid. It's really, really important that you're saying volume and not amount. 
Amount is chemistry speak for the number of moles, and you're not talking about keeping the number of moles the same, especially for the hydrochloric acid where you're changing the concentration. Often an easier way to remember this is to just give a number. So if you say as part of your method, measure 10 centimetres cubed of sodium thiosulfate, then you don't need to worry about which word you're using because you've put that measurement in there. And also it takes less time to write. Now you might include something about having temperature in there, but remember temperature is only a control variable if you are actively controlling it. So doing something at room temperature does not count as controlling it. So if this were a question that specifically asked you to name control variables and you wanted to talk about temperature, you would need to talk about doing the reaction in a water bath or something that would actively control the temperature. Then the purpose of this reaction is to see what is the impact of concentration. So at the end, when you've got your data, you need to do something with it. So we're going to make sure that we compare the time taken for the cross to disappear. And of course, the shorter the time is, the faster the rate of reaction. Now you're ready to write your numbered list method for this required practical. If you haven't done so already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to write an answer. This is quite a complicated required practical, so there's a lot of detail that for some other practicals we might need to include, but here we can omit. But I'm going to include everything that we might want to talk about. So firstly, we need some different concentrations of acid, and you might have included taking different volumes and then topping those up with water to make the same volume, but five different concentrations. I would say here there's so much in this practical that this isn't really required, so you might have just said take five concentrations of acid, and that would be fine. Next, you're going to measure out a set volume of sodium thiosulfate. It doesn't need to be exactly 10. I just find it easier to write a volume than write take a set volume. Um, but as long as the volume you've put is reasonable, it doesn't have to be exactly 10. If you've got 5 or 20, that would be OK too. We need to do this in a separate measuring cylinder because if there was any acid left in the measuring cylinder that we were using, the reaction with the sodium thiosulfate would start before we were ready. Then you're going to transfer that sodium thiosulfate either to a little glass McCartney bottle if you've done the micro scale version of this practical or to a conical flask if you're doing it on a larger scale. You would then place that vessel over a pencil cross or you could have also talked about using a light sensor. You might have mentioned about warming the acid and the sodium thiosulfate to a particular temperature as another control variable. But again, I would say there's so much in this required practical, you don't actually need to have included that to get your six marks. You're then going to add a small set volume of the acid to the sodium thiosulfate. And if you've mentioned some equipment, you should talk about doing it with a dropping pipette. You're then going to time how long it takes for that cross to disappear, and you're going to record that time. And then you should really repeat this investigation, keeping absolutely everything the same a couple of times and calculate a mean. Now comes our independent variable changing. So you're going to repeat steps one to eight using each of your different concentrations of acid. And you might want to include there that you're keeping the concentration of the sodium thiosulfate the same, because often in these questions, there are marks for indicating the control variables. Finally, we're going to compare and see the shortest time corresponds to the fastest rate. Now, as we've said before, there's a lot of detail you can put in here and you don't need everything that I've written down to get six marks. But what we do need is a good method that would allow us to get the data to answer the question. So we have to include something about having set volumes. We have to have controlled that aspect of the experiment. We have to have made sure that we've actually got either a pencil cross that's going to disappear or a light sensor, which is going to indicate when a certain amount of light is not getting through anymore. We need to have added the acid to the sodium thiosulfate. We need to have timed how long it takes for the reaction to take place. We need to have repeated using the different concentrations of acid, so changing that independent variable. You don't have to have gone for five. Um, really, as long as you've got two different concentrations, you would get valid data that you could use. And then finally, you need to have compared your data. As long as you've got those six things, then even if you've missed out some of the additional detail, you can have six marks for this question. Tomorrow, we're moving on to physics paper two, and this time we're looking at forces and stopping distances. 
Remember, there's a link in the description below to all of the questions for this week's videos, and you can also find all of the videos put together in a playlist. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again tomorrow for the last of this week's Six Mark Challenges. If you found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Science revision videos coming soon.